Army presents The Big Picture, an official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. Korea today is paradoxically a house that stands divided. Slicing across the country is a narrow, demilitarized zone, a bulwark of freedom for the people of the South. This DMZ strip and the freedom it protects were purchased at a cost beyond measure. Both are preserved by the continuing effort of men of many nations. Meet one now, Sergeant Clint Walker, just back from Korea. Out of some of you men, this trip to Korea is just going to be so many months of drudgery. To others of you, it's going to be an introduction to a people and a way of life that you've never known. Now, technically, the state of war still exists. And you're being assigned there to maintain the truce and to make sure the war doesn't become a real one again. The way you will work and live will depend a lot on where you're assigned. There's a big difference between the forward areas and the rear areas, such as around Seoul or Pusan. But wherever you will be, it will take a man to do the job. I was stationed on the DMZ. It conditions all our thoughts and actions. To the north lies communist-held Korea. Directly in front of us is the neutral zone, an invisible barrier that divides the nation. It is under constant patrol by United Nations forces on the south and by the communists on the north. Our forward units are composed of Americans with a few Katusas, Korean army troops attached to the United States Army, some Turk and Thai troops, along with the Rock Army, which covers over 80% of the line. And they are some of the best troops I've ever known, and we're lucky to have them. The Rock Army is the fourth largest in the world. It's tough, it's determined, and alert. It's equipped with modern arms and ready for any emergency. Individually, the rock soldier is tough, too. This is a form of judo called Tang Su. It may explain why the Korean troops are sometimes called hard rocks. You never get a chance to forget that the enemy is just across the ridge, and he's tough, but so are we. That's why you have to be ready all the time. Anything less than 100% qualification is just sticking your neck out. Your first warning of enemy action may come from an observation post or patrol, in which case you may have as much as an hour before the enemy troops could reach your battle positions. But you may be only seconds away from their artillery shell. So there are a lot of alert drills. And you will never know when it's the real thing.
Because of this alert status, only a few troops can be away from the post at any one time. So the off-duty facilities are varied enough to suit everyone. Incidentally, a lot of you may find this a good opportunity to increase your education. You work hard, you play hard. Because the Catoosas will live and work with you, you will have a good chance to get to know them as individuals. But it may take time. Now, Kim was a member of my squad. He was a good soldier, but I didn't really start to know him until one day we were making the courier run together. I was fresh out of the States and pretty green. It was getting near dusk and we were climbing through some of those vertical mountains on our way back to the DMZ. Kim was driving and I was riding shotgun. Suddenly we began to look like a Stanley steamer and I knew we'd had it. radiator had let go, and we were in the middle of nowhere. Well, at least almost. Leaky radiator, no water. Without water, we couldn't get through the mountains before dark. And one of these villages didn't strike me as a kind of place to spend the night. After an eternity, he reappeared. and with reinforcements. Oh, the nice people. You like? Sure I like. You come from around here? No. My people live on the other side of the mountain. But many cousins on both, both sides. Hey, uh, Kim. Hmm? Tell me, what was that stuff you put in our radiator? Oh. I brought more, like Boy Scout. Be prepared next time. Tastes like flour. <laughs> we call it chapsalkaru. It's uh, nice flour. Program good, so we get home. Have to clean out good then, or lieutenant. Uh, be plain man? <laughs> Where'd you ever learn something like that? Oh, pick it out. When I was kid. <laughs> sure didn't figure on him teaching me anything. But what I learned from Kim that day was just the beginning of my education. That ain't Sergeant. Sergeant Walker, do you know why I sent for you? You proved yourself as a combat leader? And also, you've taken a tremendous interest in the civic affairs of our area. I'm asking you to take on an additional duty. Yes, sir. So from now on, you'll be working with me as a member of the Community Relations Advisory Council. Thank you, sir. Now, you're familiar with our area, but let's take another look at it. You recognize this map, Sergeant? I think so, sir. Well, this map shows our sector responsibility, the engine me on. A Meon is equivalent to one of our counties at home. We have about 2,000 men to carry out defensive operations. Around us, there are approximately 10,000 people who live in these 16 villages. Now, obviously, 
It's terribly important that we maintain good relations with these people. I don't think we can know our Mion too well. In the event of a shooting war, we have to know who to evacuate and who to arm. As a matter of fact, their goodwill and their active assistance may play a major role in our defense of this area. In a broader sense, Sergeant Walker, we must defend the free world by promoting democratic ideals right here in Korea. And there was a lot of hard feeling last week in our advisory council over that Jeep accident. You remember that? Yeah, I remember it, sir. It was clearly a case of reckless driving, Sergeant. And the people in the village had every reason to get sore. However, after they learned that we don't condone such misconduct, that the man was punished, they were at least reassured that we had a sense of fair play. Yep, one eight ball, one careless act can louse up our whole operation over here. Now today, the shoe will be on the other foot. At our crack meeting this afternoon, we're gonna take up the difficult problem of conditions in the villages. The village of Tong Ni has made a real effort to get rid of those undesirable elements that congregate around our camps. I want to give them all the help we can. You may have some ideas of your own. I have a few, sir. Good. Let's go. I've been to town before, but I never rode through it with such a sense of importance. The honor guard was sure spit and polished, and I was proud that our outfit had helped with the uniforms. The representatives on the mayor's side included a merchant, the head of the orphanage, the minister, the chief of police, and the doctor. Well, I suppose I would seen all these people before, but they were just Koreans then. Now I was meeting them as people. Some of them I would get to know a lot better. Together we, the leading citizens of the entire community, met to discuss its problems. Yendedangim, a honor leader Kedal, Uri Samosilkaji, Pang Munezes, a Tedani, Kam Tamida, a Poshim Bawachi. 학교 학생들이 아 그림 그림입니다. 그래 여기서 제일 잘 되는 걸 일등으로 주게 했습니다. Colonel, it is my great pleasure to have you and your men visit us in my Myon office today. You will see around us the picture made by school children for the safety campaign. It will be our duty later to select the best one for a prize. But the discussion didn't linger on the subject of art contests for children any longer than courtesy required. Once a friendly atmosphere had been established, the civilian representatives brought into the open the things which really concerned them, the practical everyday problems of community life. These embraced everything from relations with the armed forces in the area to general aspects of the local economy. And in a country largely agricultural, it is not surprising that one of the most pressing topics was one that happened to be right up Sergeant Walker's furrow. Well, sir, my folks are farmers back home, and I'm pretty well acquainted with this problem of a cash crop. Now, what I think these people need is a more diversified farming. <laughs> Well, now, this may be way out in left field, but... Le left field? What is left field? Well, it means irrelevant. Uh, doesn't make sense. It's just a baseball expression. Oh, oh baseball. Baseball. <laughs> well, down south, I've noticed the farmers have livestock. And up here, the people don't have much. Now, if we could start a program like... Uh, well, at the 4-H club. Maybe we could not only increase the stock, but we could improve the breed. 
어, 저분이 말하는 것은 남한에서는 가축을 기르는 농부를 봤답니다. 그러나 이 근처에서는 그런 농부를 볼 수가 없다는 거만요. 그래서 사회지 그룹과 같은 사업을 시작하여 새로운 가축 종자를 들여오면 좋을 것 같다고 말을 합니다. Before I knew it, I was a 4-H club expert, complete with members and livestock. We also managed to get some calves to improve the local stock. Well, I was really getting around the countryside, and Kim and I had become a pretty good team. Through Kim, I was getting a better look at Korean country life, but there was more to come when we went to Seoul. One of my buddies was stationed there as part of the United States Army Advisory Group Korea called KMAG. He was one of a small group of Americans who were allowed to have their families with him. I was anxious for Buck Armstrong to meet Kim. Please come in where it's a little bit cooler. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Buck, how long have you been here? Long time. Ah, uh, What? <laughs> Kim Sung Sa. Yeah. Uh, 얼마 땅은 아십니까? 네, 한 6개월 동안 같이 일해 왔습니다. 아, 그렇죠? 네. 아, 아무튼 uh, 반갑습니다. <laughs> 고맙습니다. <laughs> For crying out loud, where did you learn this lingo? Oh, the uh, language school, the Army Language School in Monterey. Anybody that's going to be over here on a long term has to go there first for some study. And uh, then, too, it's a command order that all the two-year men here have to study on duty time. How am I doing, Kim? Mm, very good. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you all sit down and be right. more comfortable? Oh, that looks wonderful. Thank you. Oh, boy, you sure surprised me on this language bit. I sure wish I knew that much. Well, you'll learn some of it while you're here. After all, it isn't such a difficult language, only just don't be too discouraged at first. After all, any attempt is better than none at all. Isn't that right, Kim? That's right. People will try to understand. And you know, you'd be surprised how many Korean people can speak English, especially if they've been to high school. And they're always looking for a chance to try it out. A number of the fellows from the posts near Seoul are teaching English to small groups of Koreans. These are very industrious and ingenious people. You've probably noticed the many jeeps converted into taxi cabs and even fancier bus bodies. They're old truck chassis, and the bodies are hammered out of discarded oil drums. Seoul was particularly hard hit during the fighting, and almost all manufacturing facilities were destroyed. These people have had to start over from scratch, and are past masters at improvising all sorts of things from whatever can be salvaged. Most of Korea's industrial strength was originally in the north, and is now in communist hands. Through American aid, many new factories are now being built in South Korea. There's also great emphasis on technical training, which can help raise the standard of living for these people. I've learned to admire the spirit of the Korean people. That may be because, in many ways, they're a lot like the Americans. <laughs> My family is looking forward to meeting Sergeant Walker. Perhaps we go to the restaurant? I'm looking forward to it also, Kim. In fact, we were on our way there, Buck. I just wanted to stop by and make sure it was you. Lillian? <laughs> It's been great seeing you again. Oh, it's been wonderful seeing you again, Cliff. Come back again. Oh, uh, we will. You take care of this lug, huh? Oh, I sure will. So long, buddy. <laughs> my father says that my brother has told us about your many good days in the village near your camp. 
Keith is very proud to know you. Well, Kim deserves about half the credit for everything I do. <laughs> he speaks to the people for me. Besides, I was enjoying myself. You are very modest. Some soldiers do not make so good impressions trying to enjoy themselves. My sister is too serious. You see? What education does to a pretty girl. Forgive me, Sergeant. This has been difficult to years for the girls to grow in. Many families do not allow soldiers to meet their daughters. It is a sincere compliment to you that my father has allowed my brother to bring you home. I also am happy that he did. Well, I understand, but I hope that you will help Kim show me around your town. Yedra, doidren, what's in your head? Oh, my God, I'm going to go to Maseo. A mother is of another generation. I will be glad to go with you. If you will excuse me, I will change to street clothes. Bye, Gara, Gara. After the discussion at Kim's house, I felt pretty privileged at having a queen like his sister showing me her city. I found that her education, far from ruining her, had made her a very mature and attractive girl. She understood both her own people and the tremendous changes that the war had made in their lives. These solid old rock walls once held out invaders, but that was long ago. Today our capital city is only minutes away from the communist jet airfields. Gates and walls have lost their protective strength. Most of our homes were destroyed in the bitter fighting that ran the full length of our country. Over three and a half million refugees pulled in from the north. But now, great progress has been made in health programs and in new housing projects. But perhaps the most significant progress is being made in education. That is why I'm so proud to be a teacher and have a part in building the future of our nation. Here is where I work with 80 little girls and boys trying to help them learn all the things they need to know to become our future citizens. <laughs> Sometimes I can take them to the shrines where the past greatness of our country can be remembered in the beautiful palaces of ancient rulers. Scholarship is one of Korea's finest traditions. In the 15th century, one of our scholar kings developed a simple alphabet and began one of the world's first encyclopedias. As a matter of fact, Koreans invented movable metal type at least 
50 years before anyone in Europe did. Today this Hangul alphabet serves us well, since it is written across the page instead of down like other oriental characters. Now Koreans can read many books in their own language. There are also many universities, many future teachers and other leaders for our country. There are yet many problems to be solved. But we trust with friendly understanding that your people will take from Korea memories of what is best about us. Just as we will remember the great strength and the kindness that is America. Kim, my friends in Moonsani, and perhaps most of all Kim himself, had opened for me a side of Korean life which I would have never appreciated had I stayed in camp, and I was grateful for it. In spite of the hardships, there are many opportunities in Korea. Whether you are stationed with the Korean people or on the DMZ, be a good soldier. Live up to your responsibilities as a citizen of a most fortunate country. Democracy protects individual liberty, but it will only protect us so long as we protect it for all men everywhere. The Big Picture is an official report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the Department of the Army in cooperation with this station.